Silent God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the church, of Jesus Christ, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, 
and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning, and welcome to worship as we gather this morning on this hot and humid 4th of July weekend. We are glad, so glad for your presence with us, and we hope that you are, that you are doing well. Just a few announcements. Uh, first of all, this is a mask, and I just, I suspect you know how to wear them, but I'm going to help you in case you're still wondering because I think it's really important if we're going to move forward uh, into uh, what we're called to be about as a community of faith, it includes a mask. So, wearing it like this works because it covers my nose and my mouth. Wearing it like this so that it reveals my nose does nothing. Wearing it like this so that it serves as a dickie for my neck does nothing. So please wear your mask. Please pay attention to, um, to the Grace Online and to the website to see what your smart team is up to. You'll notice that we had somebody singing today. The, the, what we're doing is that the leader, there'll be one leader who will be appointed to sing and nobody else will as per all the guidelines. Um, last night, we gathered uh, with Emmanuel Lutheran in Brunswick, and we gathered with uh, Hope, and we gathered with Calvary. And it was wonderful. There were 22, 23, 20-some 20 cars there, and it was a wonderful time of gathering for uh, worship and um What's going to happen from now on is we're going to hold, we as a congregation will hold worship, uh, midweek worship on Wednesday nights every other week. So there won't be one on, ja on January, <laughs> on July 8th, but there will be one on July 15th. Not one on the 22nd, but one on the 29th. Uh, we'll keep you posted and we'll help you remember these things for sure. I also wanted to say... Uh, this. You ever get to that age where you have to hold things out a little bit to see what you wrote? I also want to say congratulations to two families uh, who have a new addition among them. For John and Lynn Paulson, whose daughter gave birth to a little girl, this week we are ecstatic and uh, wish God's blessings upon them all. I think her name is, the little one's name is Jean. So uh, if you see John and Lynn, uh, congratulate them and wish them all kinds of well. And also the Schoberg uh, experience, the Schoberg family, the whole Schoberg family. We wish, we wish the whole Schoberg commune uh, our congratulations. Um, Jason and Melissa gave birth to Robert uh, earlier this week, uh, just in fact a day ago from when we're recording. So Raylan is now officially a big brother, and uh, I know the family is ecstatic, so please uh, wish them well and keep, keep all of these families and all families right now in your prayers. This is a strange time, and it's hard to know always how to connect with one another. Prayer is a way of connecting as is phone, as are cards and letters, as they always have been. At this time, I'd like to call on Kelly Kerr. Good morning. Um, we are celebrating the 4th of July this weekend, if you didn't know that. Um, and if you were all here, I would ask, what are some things that have to do with the 4th of July? And I have a feeling there'd be a lot of, like, this, hands raising, and then fireworks. That would probably be the overwhelming answer. Um, maybe hot dogs, maybe camping, maybe boat parades, maybe would be your answer also. 
But what if I told you that change is something that goes with the 4th of July? Change. I don't know. You might kind of look at me funny. I'm not sure. Maybe some of the adults in the congregation would look at me funny. I'm not sure. But truly, something that goes with the 4th of July is change. Because when the Declaration of Independence was signed in 1776, those people who signed it were calling for some pretty big changes. And in fact, only a couple of years before that, before the Revolutionary War started, most people supporting that change were actually considered radical. So, in a very short time, there were some big changes in our country, the birth of our country. So that brings me to the mission statement that we have been talking about over the last several weeks. So if you've been watching my Tuesday messages or listening on Sundays, you know that I've been talking about that mission statement and what some of those things mean. And we are to the part that says, committed to change. So we have said that we will go as spirit-filled disciples of Jesus Christ, committed to change the world. Wow, that's a big statement. And I'll be honest, when, when I say that at the end of the services, that's the line that always kind of makes me go, whew, really? Committed to change the world? Not only do I need to change the world, but I have to stay committed to it too. Like I gotta keep on it until, until it's done. And I feel fervent. I feel heavy when I say that. I feel really unsure. I am just not sure that that's possible. Because burdened means you have a heavy weight on you. And how am I supposed to do that? So we live in an awesome country. We live in a beautiful country. And I truly believe that there is more good than bad in this country. But there's also a lot of work to do in this country, and a lot of, and in the world. A lot of things to change, and a lot of arguing about what needs to change. So how are we supposed to even agree on what needs to be changed, let alone change it? Well, I want you to listen today during the Gospel reading from Matthew. So when the pastor will be reading the Gospel lesson, I want you to listen carefully, because there is a part that might tell you what we can do with some of that burden when we feel overwhelmed by everything that we need to change. So let's see if you can catch it. And remember, if we go, if we take action as spirit-filled disciples, given the power of the Spirit, disciples of Jesus Christ, meaning we are called to love God and others first, then we really are already on our way to changing the world. We've already done, we've already started what we need to to change that world and to be able to live out committed to change. So, when you're having fireworks and hot dogs and celebrating, think about how this country has changed and the change that needs to come still. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 11th chapter. Jesus says to his disciples, But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came, eating and drinking. And they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. 
All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. So before the sermon, I want to say just one thing and then uh, do one more thing. And the thing I want to say is we will have communion today. And in our gospel lesson today, it talks about things are known uh, by Jesus who reveals things to us, kind of surprises us. And so we have a little surprise right now. Natalie Van Berkelio Carbonara is playing Light Dawns on a Weary World. Light Dawns on a Weary World. And she is the daughter of uh, Dave and Betsy Van Berkelio. They don't know that this was going to happen. So we've kind of been working behind the scenes. So please uh, enjoy uh, this special music. So today, God, on this 4th of July weekend, we thank you for gifts that keep on giving, gifts like freedom and mercy and compassion and tolerance and love. We thank you, God, that you are with us here and now. And now, God, we ask, we ask for your presence that brings us rest that allows us to let go and to trust you are not only here, but you are also at work among us. Thank you, O oh God, 
In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I wonder if this is true for you or was when you were younger. You go and go and go during the day when you were really young and when your parents put you to bed and say, I don't want to go to bed because I'm, I'm not tired. I'm not tired. I'm not tired. Anybody hear say that even now as you go and go and go all the time and still there seems like there's no end in sight of things to do and at the end of the day your body may be telling you one thing and your mind something else. We've noticed this with Annika who has no end of energy in sight from before she wakes up in the morning until late at night. And when we try to get her to take a nap, or to lay down and relax, uh, or to sleep at night, it takes a while for that to happen. I'm not tired. I don't feel like I need a nap. That's my favorite sentence that she says about this. I don't feel like I need a nap. I raise this because, I don't know about you, but I've noticed that there's a lot of fatigue around everything that's sort of happening around us. And I know that I uh, feel a little fatigued and will enjoy some vacation uh, several weeks down the road and um, where I will sit on a boat and read a book and take a nap or two or three or more or do or take a walk or do whatever. In our, in our culture, it seems like admitting the need for rest is somehow a weakness, somehow not something that um, should be honored, because we should just be go from before we get up in the morning till late at night. And if, if we feel like that, I wonder if that isn't true in other Times and in other places. It is a strange thing um, that Jesus is saying today. And what makes it strange is that, um, well, for a couple of reasons. First of all, he is, he's reversing it, sort of turning upside down how we think about things. It isn't the wise and the intelligent who get what God is up to in Jesus Christ. It is the young to whom uh, Jesus reveals what he is up to. The word reveal is, um, is to uh, uncover, to make known in a way that is maybe gentle, but a way that surprises and brings just a deep sense of relief and a deep sense of peace. I suspect by this point in Matthew's Gospel, the disciples are wiped out, tired, just weary, bone weary, maybe like some of you are bone weary. I don't even know if they had a sense that that was okay either. I mean, they are following Jesus after all, and at least as far as we can tell, uh, Jesus only took a couple naps in the Gospels. My favorite is when he's sleeping in the boat and all the disciples are freaking out. And I said, don't you care? And Jesus is like, yeah, I care. Well, then do something. So then he says to the sea, shut up. And it calms down. I'm sure he went back and took a nap, finished his nap, right? Because Jesus knows. Jesus knows that for all the things that make us weary, that for all the things that make us parched, in our spirits, that for all the things that we're doing relentlessly, like a hamster on a wheel, that finally, the one who has us in his hands has all things in his hands. And it's possible for us not to be relentless in the things that we do 
to maybe take a break, to take a breath, to take a nap, to trust that God is, that God is, that God is there, and that God is work, at work among us. In college, I got a note from a pastor that said, believe it, Paul, uh, God is an even better giver than you are. Take time to receive. I, I hold on to that because so often I think that I have to not only be in front of everything, but I have to uh, have already predicted what was coming next. And sometimes, sometimes as a human being, that's not possible. And it's easy to feel like you know, I'm a failure. Maybe you worry that as well. Maybe you worry that you're failing in pandemic life right now as well. It's not uncommon. So Jesus says, come to me all you who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. This is not what they were expecting. They were expecting, come to me and I will make you rich. Come to me and I will make you powerful. Come to me and I will give you all things. And Jesus does something that totally shakes their, shakes them to their core. I will give you rest. Why would he say that? Why would he say rest? A contemporary author named Eugene Peterson, who died in the last couple of years, he was a pastor, he wrote a lot of books, most, uh, mostly for pastors, but he, he wrote this sentence, and I think it makes total sense. When we rest, God gets done in, with, and through us what he cannot get done in, with, and through us when we're running around like chickens with our heads cut off. Fair enough. And so in, in the opportunity to let go, God takes, takes us and takes our concerns and takes our cares into, his, into himself. And he promises to be with us. And he promises to console us. He promises to give us all things, including his peace. So, dear friends, if we're looking for life lessons from Jesus today, if that's why you're here, here it is. Jesus says, take a nap, relax, rest, and know that God is an even better giver, an even better worker, an even better uh, putting things together that have been broken than you or I are. After all, God is the one who raised Jesus, who died and was raised from the dead for our sake. God is the one who enters into our lives where we are, and God will not let us go. God will not let us go. Thanks be to God. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Give us rest, O oh God, from our weariness in this time of pandemic, where we might feel like we're chickens, with, running around like chickens with our heads cut off. Be God with those who, are, who need rest, 
because of their weariness, not only because of the pandemic, but also because of illnesses. Maybe because they've lost their job. Maybe because their family is falling apart. Maybe because they don't know what the future holds. Maybe because they feel anxious and depressed. Enter in, O oh gracious one, and change us by your grace. To stop running the hamster wheel and to start trusting by your Spirit's power. To trust not only your presence, but your work among us. Give us grace, O oh God, to let go and to let you live out your gracious will among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we do, in fact, pray for those who are ill and hospitalized, who are convalescing and who are still awaiting tests, test results. We pray today for Larry, Jerry, Anna, Kathy, Bonnie, Pearl, Dave, Shirley, and those whom we name before you silently or aloud. Our great healer and our great hope, we trust that you know what people need, that you know where the broken areas are, that you know where the anxiety resides. So, O oh God, enter in and bring your peace, bring your healing, bring new life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today, God, we also, uh, on this 4th of July weekend, in which we celebrate all kinds of freedom. Freedom uh, in our country, but also uh, freedom because of you. An evangelical freedom that allows us to trust above all calls to do otherwise. To trust your mercy and your grace. Be with those who serve our country, especially Chris and Zach and Benjamin and all others that we know. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our time, God, where you call us to rest through Jesus, awaken in us as you give us rest for our weary souls and bodies. Awaken in us a sense of your presence and of your work that does not compute, that does not fit on a ledger, that does not fit on a sheet of paper, but in fact encompasses the whole world, even us. Give us faith to trust your promises for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All of these things and whatever else we should ask, we pray trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, Jesus took the cup. Giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the food that brings rest and healing.
healing and new life to our bodies and souls. Thanks be to God. Amen. So at this point, I invite you to take the wafer or the bread or the cracker, whatever you're using. Whatever you are using to take that. The body of Christ given for you. And then the wine, the blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our crucified and risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with your justice and strengthen you and keep you in his grace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will go as spirit-filled disciples of Jesus Christ, committed to change the world by God's grace through worship, education, mission, and ministry.